Hey guys and welcome to my channel talking with Tamaya. If you're new here, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And if you're a returner, as always, thank you guys so much for your love and support. Before I even get into this video, let me just say something to y'all, okay? I have been going through my analytics. A lot of you guys are returners and I appreciate that. Oh, I love you. But you do not subscribe. Do you know? that adversely affects me i can't do my part as a creator without your part as a supporter so if you support my channel make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you don't have a youtube account simple use your gmail account it's so easy like one two three so anyway welcome to my channel this video is unlike any video i've ever created on my channel it's actually my first reaction video and what i'm reacting to is my mock trial so if you guys have been watching my videos for a while and some of you guys have and have not been subscribing and i told y'all about that so don't let it happen again but if you've been watching my videos for a while you guys know that last semester i was actually in a trial advocacy class at my law school um and my final for that class was actually putting on a mock trial so it was two teams against each other um, myself and my partner were co-counsels and we were against the opposing side and they were the defendants in this class i mean in this um assignment yeah in this class but for this assignment so they were the defendants we were the plaintiffs and what we got was a case and we were just pretty much arguing it as though we were attorneys so we were the plaintiffs for a doctor who was wrongfully accused of stealing from a department store um and what we pretty much made this case to be was um the store employees are pretty much lashing out at her because she was a doctor and they didn't like the fact that she was interested in pressing charges once they wrongfully accused her so once they realized that she was going to press charges they then had her prosecuted so she had to go to jail and um all of the um allegations were in the newspaper so it really adversely affected her practice um she wasn't able to work full time as a doctor anymore she just felt really embarrassed she felt humiliated um she dealt with depression as a result of it so this was our case so i was on the plaintiff side just to give you guys some perspective so anyway what i want to show you guys is pretty much my closing argument for the mock trial so my partner did the opening argument and i did the closing argument and in a case the closing argument is pretty much the last thing that the jury hears from you as the attorney so what i really want you guys to see is that i did make quite a few mistakes um, on my closing argument and in addition to that I did not memorize it so a lot of it I actually did come up with on the fly um, so what I did was I created talking points and I just understood my case so I kind of knew what direction I wanted to go into but it wasn't like me memorizing a full-on script because I felt that that was very inauthentic um, so I just want you guys to see that it's not perfect um, a lot of it is a struggle I haven't watched the full thing actually um, just because I have a hard time watching myself but for this video we're going to do it like I literally have watched like the first 30 seconds of it and I cringed because my hair was messed up so I didn't watch the rest of it but for this video we're gonna go through the whole thing I think it's I think it says eight minutes so we're just gonna go through it so y'all can just see what a mock trial or closing argument looks like for law school um, and we can cringe together but I did get my grade back from this class I actually got an A which is why I felt like okay I can show this because I kind of feel like I guess reputable enough to show it like I feel like if I would have gotten like a C <laughs> I wouldn't be showing it because obviously something went awry but I got an A so we can look at it and that should also show you that you don't have to be perfect to get an A you don't have to have the best closing argument on the planet like you just have to do your part I guess um and I you know I did work really hard on it but like I said it's not perfect so hopefully this gives you guys inspiration to know that done is better than perfect okay so we're gonna go through it mm -hmm. i might stop and pause like a little bit throughout it i haven't watched the whole thing but if there's something like i want to clarify or give more insight into or just comment on 
I may do that so we will go through the full eight minutes but it might be broken up depending on what I end up seeing or how I react to this so let's just get into it let's just get into it $39.95 Okay, I'm gonna pause yeah. it right here. I'm gonna pause it right here. So when I said her whatever, her whatever in her livelihood, that is called a trilogy. And if you're someone who's preparing for like a mock trial for your class or whatever, a closing argument or an opening argument, um, trilogies are something that's really appealing in the courtroom. My professor heavily emphasized the use of trilogies. Um, it just sounds good, it sounds complete. Um, especially when you do things like um, trilogies that play on the same word, so say each word starts with the p that really can get the jurors attention um according to my professor so that's something that i definitely have tried to emphasize just throughout my class um so i'm pretty sure there's quite a few trilogies um in this speech but just in the event that you're someone who's preparing for something keep that in mind because my professor loved trilogies um and a lot of legal professionals especially like um litigators are big about trilogies so Hey, trilogy, there goes the tip right there. Okay, let's finish. Oh, also, I hate my hair. That was the reason why I couldn't get through the full video. Like, there's like a space. Like, I just hate it. And also, I'm sorry about this backpack. My sister actually recorded it because she was one of my witnesses for the mock trial. And she messed up. <laughs> she messed up. And I think she did it on purpose because she kept telling me, if you follow me on social media, you guys would see the messages I posted from her where she just kept telling me that she was going to mess up and she didn't mess up like her lines but like at the start when she like answered her question she said something wrong and I'm pretty sure she did it on purpose but I don't know who's to say but anyway she recorded it and there's like another student's backpack right there but we'll finish we'll, we'll finish in her city for $49.95 now the defendants in this case are predicating their containment of Dr. Adams on grounds of reasonableness. It was reasonable for the store clerk to believe that Dr. Adams took the $49.95 bottle of Paris Cologne and put it in her purse. It was reasonable that after the detective grabbed Dr. Adams by her arm, took her to the security office, prior to calling her a shoplifter in front of the onlookers, that she was just going to be okay with that. They thought it was reasonable for them to go in her bag and still proceed to accuse her of stealing a $49.95 bottle of cologne, although there was no sample sticker present on the cologne in her bag. In addition to that, the store clerk put out a brand new bottle of the Paris cologne just an hour before Dr. Adams was present in the shopping center. Her bottle was half full. However, they have forgotten that fact. They still proceeded to harass Dr. Adams and accuse her of something that she did not do. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this case comes down to three things. An abuse of authority, a reckless disregard for the truth and the derailment of Dr. Adams' life. So I'm gonna start with the abuse of authority. You've heard from several people today, one of those people being the store manager, another person being the detective who sees Dr. Adams. What I want you guys to see is that they overtly used their authority here in this case today. When Dr. Adams made it clear to them that she had no reason to steal, when she made it clear that she was a doctor and that she would gain nothing from stealing a $49.95 bottle of Paris cologne, they believed her. 
we know that they believed her because there was no formal investigation. No one went to see whether or not the Paris Cologne was still there. No one went to see whether or not there was a sample sticker anywhere. No one did anything. They knew that it was unreasonable to believe that Dr. Adams was still anything. They knew that they got the wrong person and they knew that they overused their authority. And at that moment, you know what they did? They told Dr. Adams to sign a waiver. They told Dr. Adams, we'll let you go if you sign this waiver. Now, the moment when Dr. Adams made it clear that she would not relinquish them from their liability, she would not relinquish them after they had defamed her and humiliated her in front of shoppers in the store. She would not release them of liability because she has been a shopper at that store for years. And now today of all days, they're accusing her of such a heinous crime. No reasonable person in their mind would sign that waiver. So Dr. Adams refused. At that moment, we then see a reckless disregard for the truth. The staff at Shepard Department Store never went to the counter to see whether or not the Paris Cologne was there. They didn't care. They knew Dr. Adams would not steal something for $49.95. She is a doctor. But because she refused to sign that waiver, now they wanted to do some investigating. Now they wanted to see whether or not the cologne was there. Now they wanted to search for sample stickers. I would like you all to know that during that time when they refused to thoroughly investigate, close to 15 minutes had passed. I hate my hand gestures. Um, a lot of times my professors like, you wanna use your hands intentionally. Um, so you want to use them, say if you're going to a direction, you want to show here, there, but I feel like I use them like overly. And um, I feel like it's because I feel awkward just standing there. Like it just feels awkward. It doesn't feel natural. I don't know. Comment down below what you guys think. But I feel like I kind of overuse the hands. <laughs> Let's continue. Anything could have happened in that span of time. And they knew that. However, the detective came back with a sample sticker no indication that that sample sticker came from the Paris Cologne, I would like to add. Every single cologne at that store has the same sample sticker, but somehow that was enough to prosecute Dr. Adams because she refused to sign that waiver. Dr. Adams stood up for herself. Dr. Adams was being bullied. Dr. Adams was defamed, and she was supposed to just lay down and take it. She's a doctor. She's a leader in her community. She has done so much for her community. Anybody in her position would have refused to sign that very waiver. So now I want to talk about the derailment of Dr. Adams' life. A doctor, a full-time doctor, has not had to cut her hours in half. Now making half of the salary that she used to sustain herself. She can't go to work. She can't even stomach the thought that people around her have read the news article essentially calling her a criminal. She can't stomach the thought that the public perception of her is someone who would sacrifice a career as a doctor for a $49.95 bottle of cologne. She's sought treatment. She throws up. She can't sleep. Post traumatic stress runs rampant. Her life has changed forever. All because the Shamlin Department Store wanted to be a bully. They wanted to once again get away with disrespecting a paying customer and have them sign a waiver and say everything is okay. Dr. Adams has spent her life doing everything right. She's worked hard to be the person that she is today. Every decision she's made has been well thought out and properly executed. And while things might seem bleak for Dr. Adams now, she did the right thing by refusing to sign that waiver. She did the right thing by making it a point to hold the Shamley Department Store responsible for their reckless pursuit of the truth. 
Dr. Adams had nothing to gain from stealing a $49.95 bottle of cologne, but she had everything to lose. You know that, and the Chandler Department Store knows that. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask you to continue Dr. Adams' efforts and hold them liable for what they've done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was out of there so quick. You can tell at the end, I didn't know what I was like, where I was headed because I didn't think that far. I didn't think that far ahead. Um, I don't think like in my outlining process, like I think I would outline like the key arguments I made. Like so they this came down to three things, this, this, this. So I would know like what facts I wanted to bring into those three main things, but I wouldn't know like verbatim um, what exactly I was going to say. So I think like in terms of my outline, I didn't definitively know how I was going to close it. But anyway, that's what we did. So my criticisms. My hand gestures, I hate them. Also, my facial expressions, because the case that we were dealing with was one that honestly was just hostile and just an abuse of authority. I think that I ha I came off very snarky and sarcastic um, because I am that way. <laughs> but I don't want that to come across in the courtroom. So I need to work on like my um, facial expressions because my, my facial expressions are very condescending. And I'm not condescending, but I am sarcastic. Um, and I am, uh, those are pretty valid facial expressions. I think I use those in my day-to-day -day life. So I think I just need to like tone it back on the facial expressions. Also, I just wish I would have done something different to my hair. Like maybe like put it back like in a, a ponytail or something. So if you're a, like a, a female or someone with a lot of hair and you are going to do something of this nature, I think it's probably best to just pull your hair back because it eliminates that distraction. And then it doesn't look, I don't know, like I hate the way my hair looks. Um, what else do I want to say? Did I want to critique? Um, so in the the fact that so sometimes it is helpful to have a script about like what you're gonna say. Um, like I know my partner did have a script, um, but for me personally, me sitting there like trying to run down like the checklist in my head of what was this, what was that. Like I know that's not realistic when you're an attorney, um, and I also just know that that is not as compelling especially if you're someone who can't make it clear that you're not reading a lot of t or you're not memorizing stuff so I, I really could always tell and my professor would always make this comment which is why I kind of like was reluctant to memorize like she would just make the comment that like it sounds like people are reading like certain classmates that I have and I just don't like that even as like a spectator like I can typically tell when somebody's like memorizing things and then when they get thrown off then like everything just goes out of whack because they remember they like remember things this exact way and if something happens where they have to deviate from that script they then just become like wait what am i doing like what's going on so i just wanted to have that comfort of knowing that i know the facts i know the law um i know what my main arguments are that i want to make but i do wish i would have just like memorized a nice and succinct closing um because one thing my professor always tells us is to start with a bang so start with something that's just going to grab their attention um whether it's like viewers or the jury or whatever you're doing you start with the bang um and then end with the bang um so I think I started with the bang by just like emphasizing the amount that the cologne um, cost, but I don't think I ended with a bang just because it was like, oh, you guys help us continue her efforts. So I don't know, it was kind of like BS, but aside from that, <laughs> I think I did really well. Um, and I did take it really seriously, honestly. I know my partner was like, girl, if you don't leave me alone, because I just took it really seriously, like the entire trial, because we literally did a full trial. Like we did jury selection where we would ask the jury questions um, and determine like who would be our jurors and who wouldn't. We did um, motions in limine where we told the judge, like this is the motion that we want to bring. This is what we want to admit. This is what we want to exclude in terms of evidence. Um, we did, um, direct examinations, we did cross examinations of the defendant's witness, um, and then opening arguments and closing arguments. So it was a lot, like it was a substantial amount of work. And then we also created a trial binder where we put like all of our questions, all of our, just pretty much the, everything that we needed for our trial. And that was what we submitted. And 
we're done. Now I'm done. And I got an A and I'm really happy with my grade. Um, and I'm done with that class. And I really learned a lot. So I'm really happy that I took that class. If you guys are in law school and you have the option to either do some type of like mock trial or do some type of um, like moot core or anything like that, um, I, re I really do recommend just giving it a try just so that you can gain that courtroom experience. Um, and I really like that this was just a class so I didn't have to dedicate like moot court hours to it because that wouldn't be sustainable with my schedule. Um, just being a law student who does work and who does have like my own entrepreneurial ventures but I was still able to get that full on experience and understand like what it takes to pretty much put a trial together um, which I honestly do that at work so that was also something that helped me a lot in the class but yeah that was my reaction video um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this video if you guys want to see more content like this comment down below make sure you guys subscribe y'all know who you are if you are on here and you can't press the thumbs up button that means you do not have an account you get me you don't have one you don't have an account make one please if you love me make an account and subscribe and thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one peace out